Everyone knows that one of the quickest ways to improve your GRE verbal score is to expand your vocabulary. This helps, of course, with sentence equivalence questions, fill in the blank questions, but it even helps with reading comprehension. If there's a key word in the conclusion of a passage and you don't know what it means, you're gonna find it much harder to analyze that passage. But you've probably been here before, right? You've set yourself a goal of memorizing 10 new words a day, you've written down the words and the definitions, but then like a week or two weeks later, you just can't remember the words or the definitions. I've seen this happen to hundreds of students. So how do we get new words to stick in our memory? I was lucky enough to get 170 in the verbal section of the GRE, and I use these two methods to help new words stick in my memory. I honestly believe that using these two methods, you can increase your vocabulary by up to 50 words a day and sometimes more. That is a crazy pace, but even if you learn just 20 new words a day, it can really affect your score and your ability to communicate in English. So let's get to it. Method number one. Create a nickname for the word that links to the definition. Let me show you an example. Harangue, a scolding or a long and intense verbal attack, a diatribe. How are we gonna memorize that? Think of some appropriate words that link the sound of the word to the definition. For me, it would be anger or argue. So my nickname for harangue is to angrily argue, to anger argue, to harangue. Now, when I hear the word harangue, I'm thinking of someone angrily arguing something, and that definition has now stuck. Let me show you four more examples that demonstrate this technique. Insipid, lacking vigor or interest. For insipid, I think of the word sip, as in to sip a drink. Sometimes if you're not so interested in a drink and you're not sure what it's gonna taste like, you might sip it first. Maybe the drink lacks interest for you, it's a bit insipid, so you would sip it. Insipid, sip it. That's my nickname. I now remember that insipid means something lacking in interest, so you might just sip it and not gulp it down. Next one, egregious, conspicuously and outrageously bad or reprehensible. Now I know that was a lot of complicated words just to describe egregious, but egregious basically means really bad, above and beyond. I'm gonna make up a character called Greg, and Greg is someone who behaves really, really badly, way worse than anyone else. You could say his behavior is egregious, <laughs> egregious. Okay, I know it's crazy, I know it doesn't really make sense, and I don't know anyone called Greg, but still, I now know that egregious means to behave really badly, like Greg. You would say to someone, your behavior is just egregious, or that foul was simply egregious. Let's do two more. Epicure, someone devoted to sensuous enjoyment, fond of fine food and fine wine. I think of that as someone who enjoys epic stuff. They don't want bland food, bland wine. They want epic food and epic enjoyment. They are an epicure. Next one, plaintive, expressing sorrow. For me, the word that sounds similar is complaint. If someone has a sad and sorrowful complaint, you might say they are plaintive. Plaintive is a bit more like being mournful or pitiful. So just imagine someone with a really sad complaint. They are plaintive. But hold up, what do we do if we can't think of a nickname for a word? What is my other golden method? Before I carry on, please do like the video and comment down below if this is helping at all. It really helps the channel to grow and let other people see the same content you did. Method number two etymology. This is one of my secrets to life actually. Knowing about etymology has helped me to appreciate the meaning of words so much more. In fact, it actually made me love learning new words. That's probably one of the main reasons I have a big vocabulary. And because I love learning words, I enjoy reading more. I enjoy reading articles and essays more. And thanks to reading, of course, my life has benefited in incalculable ways. So what is 
etymology. Etymology is the study of the origin of words. Basically, why do we use that collection of sounds to represent that concept? For example, when a bad thing happens, why do we call it a disaster, not a smish plaster? To find out, I use a great dictionary called the Online Etymology Dictionary. And no, unfortunately, I'm not sponsored by them. But other dictionaries do give the origin of a word if you scroll down below the definition. Let's take the word disaster. This is what the online etymology dictionary tells us. Anything of a ruinous or distressing nature, literally ill-starred from dis, meaning ill, and astro, meaning star. The sense is astrological, blaming something on a bad alignment of the stars, where the stars control your destiny, your fortune, your fate. I find that amazing. Dis, aster, bad star the bad alignment of stars. That's where the origin of the word disaster comes from. People used to believe that the alignment of stars and the planets helped dictate your fortune down here on Earth. And that's why when a bad thing happens, we call it a disaster. I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna forget the meaning of that word anytime soon now. Let me give you a few more quick examples of advanced GRE words that you can learn through etymology. Presage a foreboding about what is about to happen. Pre comes from before, just like the words prevent and preliminary. Sarge comes from sage or wisdom, like the word sagacious, which means wise, by the way. So having wisdom before the event is to presage the event, to have a foreboding about what is about to happen. Privation, a state of extreme poverty. The origin comes from taking away something that's privately owned to deprive or deprivation. This helps to remember that some people can end up in a horrible state of privation. One more, why not? I'm on a roll. Berserk, to go out of control with anger, to be wild or frenzied. This is actually an old Norse word from Scandinavia. It comes from the words bear and coat. Warriors who fought like bears and had maybe bear skins on their back. You could say they fought like they were berserk. They fought like Vikings. That's what it really means to go berserk. Anyway, I absolutely have to stop here. Otherwise, I could literally spend the next hour or 10 hours talking about the etymology of my favorite words. So there you have my two secrets that I've used my whole life to remember new words. Create nicknames and use etymologies. I haven't mentioned all the other methods you might use in terms of creating pictures or using the word in multiple sentences because many people talk about that. These are just my two favorite methods for learning new words. Yes, you can use these to boost your GRE vocabulary and learn 50 or maybe more new words per day. But more than that, learning new vocabulary gives you so many advantages in life beyond the GRE, in applications, interviews, and just life in general. Nothing gives a good impression like a perfectly timed, well-used word. Thanks again for watching, and please do like and comment on the video if it's helped in any way at all. I really appreciate it, and have a good day.